Welcome back to Book Break! Today it is time for our September book haul. Everyone's favourite video of the month and I have just received my monthly email from Elle which has an exciting selection of some of the best books we have published in the last month. It looks like a pretty big folder today so settle in and maybe get your shopping lists ready because you might need to end up buying quite a few of these. So first up we have... I knew this one would be in here. This is Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe by Toshigazu Kawaguchi. This is the sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which you may have heard about because I think it's the book we have talked about on book break more than any other book in the world. The original book is this really cute, quirky story about a time-travelling cafe in Tokyo and you meet all these different customers who come to the cafe to time travel for different reasons and to meet different people. And this is the sequel where we're going to meet a whole new cast of characters coming to the cafe for their own time-travelling reasons. But of course, our favourite cafe staff are still there. And I am so, so excited to read this one because I loved the original so much. I am waiting every time I hear the doorbell rings, I'm hoping it's going to be this book arriving for me. Well that already feels like the most exciting book we could get, but let's see what else this haul has to offer. Next we have The Monsters of Rookhaven by Porrick Kenny. Okay, so this is one we have been anticipating for a little while. We hinted that this one was coming back in the video we made over the summer on books that use your favourite tropes. And this was my recommendation for a book that's about found family, which is such a beloved trope. So this is a middle grade book about a monster called Mirabelle who lives with her family who are all monsters but they have this spell they use to protect them from the human world until one day the spell wears off and an orphaned brother and sister stumble into their life and it's about this group of people forming a new found family. And of course we have To Sleep in a Sea of Stars in here by Christopher Paolini. So this is the long awaited follow up from Christopher Paolini who is the author of Eragon Finally, everyone has been waiting, he has written a new book and this time it's a sci-fi and I actually have my copy right here, let me show you, it is enormous. You know that we adore big books here on Book Break, I love books that will keep you busy for weeks and this is definitely one of those, doesn't it look amazing? I haven't started this one yet but I'm so excited to dive in, this is such an epic story of a war set among the stars and I love the tagline, space holds countless secrets, she just found the deadliest one. Okay, back to my email. Next we have the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy collection. So this year marked a very important anniversary. It was the 42nd anniversary of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy radio debut and fans of the series will know that, that is very significant because the number 42 is a very important number within the Hitchhiker's Guide universe. So we have published these books this year with brand new covers and content and now we have this beautiful box set. Oh, In a Spark. This book looks so beautiful. So this is something that we all need at the moment. This is all about finding calm in a stressful world. And the author is both a clinical psychologist and a yoga facilitator. So this book combines both of those toolkits that she is such an expert of that together will help you find your inner calm. All Things Bright and Beautiful. Okay, this is one I don't know anything about, so let's have a look. Aha, okay, so you may have seen the new Channel 5 series called All Creatures Great and Small, which is inspired by these memoirs by James Herriot, who was a vet in the 1930s. And so this book, All Things Bright and Beautiful, is actually volume two in his collection of memoirs. Then we have, ah, the Lady Gaga book. So this is Channel Kindness, and this is such a beautiful idea for a book, summed up by such a beautiful cover right here. So this is a collection of 51 stories of kindness, bravery, and resilience written by young people all over the world and then collected by the Born This Way Foundation which is Lady Gaga's foundation and she's written an introduction to the book. So the real idea behind the Born This Way Foundation is the idea that kindness has such a power to change the world and that's something that's really important to Lady Gaga and that is really the theme of all of these stories here. It's channeling the way that kindness can build community and be a force for change. Okay, this is She Will Soar. So this is a poetry collection of poems written by women. So this is a really inspiring poetry collection for readers of any gender, but maybe particularly for women and girls to own. And it's got a mix of poetry by classic writers to modern voices. Booktube's very own Jen Campbell has a poem in this collection, as well as writers like Caroline Duffy, Christina Rossetti, Nikita Gill, and so many more. Then we have... <gasps> 
a big one, The Meaning of Mariah Carey. So this book is going to be iconic, much like the woman herself, and I will put a link below to a video that Mariah posted on her social media of her seeing the book in print for the first time, because it's really exciting and really sweet. Mariah Carey is just such a legend that it's so exciting. I can't wait to read this one and get more of an understanding of the human person behind the legend. And Mariah Carey has said this book is also a lot about the resilience of the human spirit as well. Then we have, oh, so many memoirs from legendary figures here. So this is Permanent Record by Edward Snowden, who famously leaked top secret NSA documents that revealed a lot about US surveillance of our phone and internet communications. So this book is his story. Starting with his childhood, we get to see him growing up, working with the CIA, and what moved him to expose what was going on. Oh, this looks like such a fun one. This is Slam. You're going to want to hear this. This is another poetry collection. So this one is very much a celebration of modern performance poetry. All of these poems were chosen and collected by Nikita Gill, and it's very much a celebration of the spoken word poetry scene. And this one feels really personal as well, so each poet who's featured in here has also written a few words to tell you a bit about themselves, introduce their poem, and even give you their tips for spoken word poetry. Aha, this is how I built this. So this is one for the podcast fans. This is based on the massively popular podcast, How I Built This. So on the podcast, Guy Raz interviews top entrepreneurs and learns their stories of how they built their incredible businesses. So from speaking to so many people, he has obviously learned a lot of very useful lessons. And so this book is him sharing some of the most incredible lessons that he's learned from these people. So if you have dreams of starting your own business, this sounds like a pretty incredible how-to guide. Or if you're more like me and could not imagine ever starting your own business, but are just fascinated hearing about how other people did it, then this sounds like a pretty incredible read. And we're into the adorable children's books. This one is My Magical Owl. So this is one of those Campbell books that have so many fun little interactive elements that I wish I had here to play with. There's also a Halloween themed one that is so cute. My first touch and find Halloween. I can only imagine there's so many fun textures and stuff to play with in there. There's the Frog Prince, that looks absolutely beautiful and it looks like you can actually move the coin along as she throws it into the water. Love that. Oh, and then this is one I've been excited about. This is Just One of Those Days by Jill Murphy. So this is the follow-up to Peace At Last, which was a book that I had read to me when I was a little girl, so I feel really nostalgic looking at this. So the original Peace At Last was actually published 40 years ago, and that was the story of Mr. and Mrs. Bear not being able to get a very restful night's sleep. And so this book is possibly set the very next morning, even though we have been waiting 40 years to find out what happened, they then wake up late and have just one of those days where nothing seems to go right. Oh, how to grow your own poem. So this is from Kate Clancy, who is a brilliant poet and teacher. She's been teaching poetry for years. And this is her kind of how-to guide for beginners starting writing their own poetry. So we actually have a video that I will link to. We got the amazing Joel from the booktube channel Fictional Fates to try out using some of the tips here to write his own poem. And he wrote this wonderful poem for us all about Excalibur. So I will link to that video so you can see his process. But this book basically is filled with creative writing writing prompts and exercises and advice to get you growing your own poems. Ah, this one looks very heavy. So this is No Fixed Abode and it's a story all about the UK's homeless population. So this book is really shining a light on the homelessness problem that we have in this country, quite how many people are dying on our streets, and also quite how easy it would be for any one of us to become homeless. And this book gives a voice to the people who are so often completely ignored and silenced, telling really sad stories, sometimes surprisingly uplifting stories, the book is also looking at the organisations who are working to end homelessness and what they're doing. Okay, next was something a bit happier. This is a collection of classic dog stories and I absolutely love this cover. How sweet is that? I'm guessing what the next book in here is going to be... And I was right, we also have a classic cat stories. So if you're getting your Christmas ideas ready, both of these are such good little gift books for the dog or cat lovers in your life. Very important to get it right, which one people are. 
Then we have Lampedusa by Stephen Price. Okay, so this is a book I haven't read, but I did hear a lot of people talking about it when the hardback came out last year. So let me look up what this one's about. So this is set in Sicily in the 1950s, and it's about a man haunted by memories of the war, struggling to complete the novel that he wants to be his lasting legacy. So that sounds beautiful. I love that cover. Makes me feel warm, makes me wish I was in Italy, and it looks like this is gonna be a very moving literary novel. And then one that I have read, and look at this cover, just amazing. So The Harpy by Megan Hunter is a very weird and wonderful, surreal story about a woman whose husband cheats on her, and so they agree that she can hurt him three times in revenge. So that's quite a dark, fairy tale -y setup, and the book never quite does what you expect. It keeps you on your toes. The whole way through we get little flashbacks to our main characters childhood obsession with the mythical creatures, harpies, and that makes the book very foreboding the whole way through. Then we have Fake Law. Aha, so this is the follow-up book from The Secret Barrister, who is a real barrister with a hidden identity who is exposing stories from within the justice system. So in this book, The Secret Barrister exposes some of the incompetence and lies behind some of the biggest legal stories that we've heard in recent years, and in doing so shows how the law is so relevant to every one of us, how it touches every aspect of our lives. Another beautiful book, another one that I have on my bookshelf, so let me grab that one for you. This is absolutely stunning, Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrink. We recently showed this one off in a book break video, which I will link to below, that was on books about books. So this is just a love letter to books and the power of reading, and how reading can help us through some of the hardest times we might face in our lives. And it's shiny! Then we have an Anne Cleves, The Darkest Evening. Okay, so I don't know the plot of this one. Let me have a look, but I know there's been a lot of buzz. Okay, so this looks great. This looks like a wintry, Christmassy mystery. This is book number nine in the Vera series, and it starts with Detective Chief Inspector Vera Stanhope driving home during a blizzard. But here is where it gets dramatic. So in the snow, she sees a car that has pulled off the road, but she looks inside as the driver's door is open and sees a toddler alone strapped into the car seat in the back of the car. So she rescues this toddler, drives on, manages to get through the snow until she arrives at this stately home that she recognises as the house her father grew up in. Inside this house, she can hear a party going on in full swing, very Christmassy, but outside in the snow, a young woman lies dead. What is going on? I've actually never read any of the Vera books, but that one sounds so fun and Christmassy that I might have to read them all to catch up. The Confession by Jesse Burton. So this is a book that I absolutely loved. I read it last year when it came out in hardback. This is a whole new cover design for the paperback and it is stunning. So this is a dual timeline story. In present day, we meet a young woman who is trying to solve the mystery of what happened to her mother. And so she gets a job working for a reclusive novelist called Connie Holden, who is apparently the last person to have seen her mother before she disappeared. And then we also flash back to the 80s and get the story of Connie Holden and her lover Elise as they moved from London to LA to work on the film adaptation of one of Connie's books. And so we find how all of these stories are gonna link up and come together. Ooh, The Memory of Souls by Jen Lyons. Okay, so this must be the sequel to The Ruin of Kings. Oh, okay, so this is actually the third book in the series. There was The Ruin of Kings, then The Name of All Things, and now we're here on book number three, The Memory of Souls. And this is an epic fantasy series about a long lost royal. Okay, and speaking of royal, this is Royal by Danielle Steele. So this one, just reading the description, Okay, so this one looks like a lot of fun. So this is a fictionalised story about the royal family, imagining what happened if, during World War II, the King Queen had quietly sent away their youngest daughter, who in this story is called Princess Charlotte. She is sent away to live with a trusted noble family and keeps her identity a secret. But then 20 years later, a young girl who was raised as an orphan and knows nothing about her true heritage finds a stack of hidden letters and her identity comes comes to the surface. So it's about this missing princess from the royal family, that sounds really fun. 
Okay, we're nearly there, just a couple more. Next is Savage Kiss by Roberto Saviano. So this one is the sequel to The Piranhas, which was about um, the young teenage boys who are in gangs on the streets of Naples and how much power they get. So in this book, we go back and meet Nicolas again, who is the leader of this gang, The Piranhas, and they're just this group of really disillusioned boys who have had much too much power too early in their lives. And then finally, last one in here is, of course, The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. So this has been another really highly anticipated book. This is the prequel to the Kingsbridge trilogy. So I will link to a video we made recently on epic book series in every genre, and I talked about the Kingsbridge novels as this epic historical fiction series spanning generations of this city and its cathedral, and everyone has been waiting for Ken Follett to write the prequel, The Evening and the Morning, which goes back to the year 1000 and spans all the events that lead right up to exactly where the first book in the Kingsbridge series starts. So what a great haul, so many highly anticipated books in there and a few that I hadn't heard of before. So do leave a comment letting us know which ones you are most excited to pick up. And of course, I will link our playlist here of all of our previous book hauls so you can click through and have a watch. See you next time.